Good morning, and welcome to our Sunday morning service at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Edison, New Jersey. We're glad that you're worshiping with us uh, this morning. Uh, thank you for taking uh, some time to be here together. Uh, at the start of our service, uh, go ahead and uh, hit the like button uh, that's uh, with you on your streaming service there uh, on Facebook, or uh, uh, hit the like on YouTube if you are worshiping with us on YouTube. Uh, that will give us a record of your attendance, but also uh, take a moment to leave your name also, or maybe the names of everyone who's worshiping with you in the comment section uh, below. Uh, also, uh, throughout uh, this, this week or, or any other time, uh, like the St. Paul's uh, Facebook page. If you are on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you are on YouTube, and then uh, you'll also be able to stay up to date with all of the things that uh, we move out and share uh, through those uh, various areas. Throughout the service, feel free to interact with your fellow worshipers, sharing greetings. Uh, when it comes to our time of sharing peace, share peace with each other uh, through the comment section. And also when it comes to, uh, to share names uh, and to lift up names in our prayers of intercession today, uh, please uh, list the names of the people that you are praying for uh, in the comment section and your prayers also uh, as we pray together as Christ's church. If you're visiting, welcome. Uh, if you are visiting from another congregation, let us know where it is that you uh, are, are a member of, uh, so that we can have that side of how we are united uh, in Christ in this time. Our service today uh, is a service of the Word, uh, celebrating uh, the festival of baptism of our Lord, and in it we'll also uh, have a chance to reaffirm our own baptism. So if you have uh, some time uh, now, uh, maybe quickly run out, get a, a bowl of water or some kind of water in some way that you, your family, those who are worshiping with you can use. Uh, if, uh, if, if you were here in person, uh, and this was sort of a normal time, we would have uh, the showering of water, so maybe some way to sprinkle yourself or the members of your family to pray, uh, play in those waters of baptism uh, while you are at home and with your household. Uh, our service begins with our thanksgiving for baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters. And by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took the light. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And by water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives in your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is Christ would for us you were baptized, hymn 304.
Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, 
we pray Psalm 29 responsibly. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory. The Lord sits the throne of the blood. The Lord sits the throne of the sins of the Lord. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Amen. A reading from Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John's baptism was with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who is to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul laid, had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, they, there were about twelve of them. The word of the Lord. will happen. 
What are they looking for? Just a, a quick aside here. In the past, these might have been merely rhetorical questions, but things being as they are now, with you there and me here and the technology that's available, I really would love to hear your thoughts and answers on these kind of questions as they come up throughout these sermons. So if you are a person who loves being in a crowd, and I know there are people who thrive on that kind of excitement, it would be great to hear about what it is about those events that draw you to that place. What are you looking for? What are you hoping for? What are you expecting? If you can't think of it right now, feel free to share with me in the days ahead. I'd love to hear what it is. Anyway, here's what it would take, besides a big sporting event, to draw me out with a crowd, especially a big rally type of event. I think I would want to feel that I was part of the moving of history, the turning of the world. And I would want to be identified with the movement that was turning the world around. By, by going out and being part of this crowd, I would want to say, this is what I am and this is what I aspire to be, what I hope for and what I want to be part of. Now, that's just me. I'm sure there are some who would nod their heads in agreement, but there are others who would say that they are just there to see what's going on, to be part of something that's just so much more exciting than their usual everyday life, or they're there simply to tell their friends that they were there on that day when this went down, to put it in whatever passes for our modern scrapbooks and memories. All this is kind of like listening to people tell the many reasons why they wanted to join the military and go off to fight a war. Some out of high ideals or a sense of, of patriotism, others simply because they were bored or wanted to prove themselves. The Gospel this morning, which is literally the beginning of the good news of Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, begins with a big gathering out and beside and even in the Jordan River. The people in Jerusalem and the whole surrounding countryside and throughout the regions around there were flocking to the Jordan River to see John the Baptist, a wild prophet who wore a camel hair tunic, a leather belt around his waist, who never drank alcohol or cut his hair, and he lived on locusts and wild honey. He preached fiery sermons, but he baptized with water, and the crowds were flocking to see him. We get the impression that the whole region, the whole nation, was enthralled and caught up in, in who John was and what John was doing by the river, and that the more the crowds lined up to see him, the more uneasy John the Baptist became. The more the crowds came to see John, John kept insisting all the louder that he was not to be the center of their attention. He wasn't the Messiah. He hadn't come to save them. He wasn't even worthy to untie the sandals of God's anointed when he appeared. He was just a voice crying in the wilderness. Don't look to me, he said. I've come to turn your hearts to God, to get ready to receive the one who would come after me, to be ready to follow the Messiah when he appeared. And John challenged all who would listen to take God's message to heart and to get down into the river to confess their sins and to receive a baptism of forgiveness. I wonder, I wonder how many people, maybe what percentage of that crowd, actually took that step to come down into the river, who confessed their sins, went under the water, and emerged renewed and forgiven. That would be a bold statement, a bolder statement than just simply going out to be part of the crowd or to see what was going on. It would be a bold and public statement because by getting down into the Jordan, that person would be repenting. That is changing. 
changing their heart and their mind, changing the direction of their lives. And they would emerge forgiven from their past and pointed in a new direction, pointed to look with eager expectation for what God was about to do. Repentance, change, confession. These are bold acts of faith that say things are bad and it's our fault. But we want to. We want to be part of God making all things new. So they repented and they confessed. Have you ever wondered what sins they were confessing? We 21st century folk usually think of sins as the things that we do wrong, the things we've done, the things we've left undone. We tend to think of ourselves in general as, as basically good by default, and sin as some kind of moral underachievement, those kind of things that we're ashamed of, those times when we say, that's not me, I'm better than that. We don't typically think of our sin as the entire direction and basic orientation of our life that consistently and as a matter of course resists God's word, works against God's will and purposes. When we pause for silent reflection before our confession and absolution each week, we don't usually sense how the whole enterprise of our life, our goals, our expectation, our allegiances and beliefs just might be moving in the exact opposite way that God is moving. And yet that is the depth and the extent of sin that John has in mind when he calls people to repent, to turn around, to change their lives, to be changed in their minds, to be changed in their hearts. And the promise of emerging from the water to take up a new way of living and a renewed covenant in faith with the God who created the confession that they were making was not just of individual sins that were getting in the way of their relationship with God or making their life miserable for them or for their neighbors. The crisis of the moment in which John appeared was an ongoing national and spiritual disaster from which there seemed to be no way out. For those who had the boldness to enter the Jordan, their desire to repent makes a statement about their deep satisfaction with life as it is, and their act of confession is a form of taking responsibility for their own broken participation in the, in the helplessness of the situation. It is not just that the nation was somehow lost and separated from God because of what was happening among the Jerusalem elite. But it was saying that I, plain and ordinary me, I have gone astray. And together with this whole flock, we have wandered off and got into all sorts of trouble. And maybe it's not all my fault, but I am not innocent. And I am just as lost as everyone else around me. And I don't know how to get home. But now, now at last, a different voice arises than the voices that have led us astray in the past. We hear the voice of the true shepherd. We hear his voice and we turn our head toward him. That's the one that John has been pointing to. The appearance of the one who is calling us all back home by calling us to him. The new center and home towards which we can all turn and that we can trust and follow without fear. The one who loves us, who has our best interest, our salvation at heart, the one who is coming among us, who has actually become one of us, who takes away our sin and gives us new life. Because that is exactly where all of this has been leading, to Jesus. The surprising moment of God's grace comes when we see Jesus appear, not high above the earth in glory, challenging us to come up to him. Not on a mountain in inaccessible light, but we see him wade into a river polluted with all of the sins of the world. And we see Jesus take our sin and then rise again in the Holy Spirit to the glory of the Heavenly Father. 
as stepping down into the river of humanity, Jesus has made a bold and public statement to us and to the whole world. God has come to be with you. He is raising up for you a Savior. When Jesus emerges, God, the voice from heaven, makes an even bolder statement about Jesus. You are my Son, the Beloved, the Anointed. Jesus reveals himself to be the Son of God by humbling himself and showing himself to be truly human. And it is from that humility that Christ now leads us forth in a new direction, in another way. He leads us out in his peace to announce good news and forgiveness of sins, to bring heaven and earth together, to heal the wounded and the broken, to repair what has been smashed, to be God's people, God's children, the way God had intended from the beginning, to save us from those who led us astray. I wonder, of all the crowds that went out to see Jesus and to be part of what was happening with John, how many of them lived out the promise by becoming Jesus' disciple? And I suppose we could ask that question of ourselves. At the end of the day, when the crowd disperses and everyone goes back to their homes and their ordinary lives, and the excitement of the day has faded away into memory, who has your heart, your soul, your allegiance, your love, and what do we have in return? Was our baptism just that one-time event, just that celebration or that party or that, that formal exercise in our culture that has now become a distant memory because we've moved on to a new and shiny new thing to distract us from the emptiness inside or to numb us from the pain that seems too much to bear in these days? Do you think that's one of the reasons we go out to be part of a big event, of a big moment, to number ourselves as part of the crowd? Are we looking to fill an empty spot in our soul, looking to belong to something, to be part of something, to be someone important? Funny. At the end of the story, we reach the moment we've all been waiting for, but the crowd is gone. And it is just Jesus who is standing there with us and for us. After the crowds go home, do we dare follow Jesus against the current of this world in, in a new direction? Do we dare repent and change the directory, the trajectory of our life? Do we dare confess our sins and admit our deep need for change and for God's forgiveness? And do we dare to take the bold steps of faith and say, things are bad, I'm part of the problem, but now, O oh Lord, make me part of your work to make things new. Forgive our sins, lead us in a new direction, so that by your Spirit we might live out the promise of our baptism by living, truly living, in Jesus' name. Our hymn of the day is hymn 396, Spirit of Gentleness.
as we start 2021, we're looking for God to do something new, to stir us up, to outpour God's Holy Spirit. Uh, and we're looking to reaffirm and reconnect uh, with the God who called us and loved us uh, in Jesus Christ. So I invite you to affirm your baptism wherever you are, whenever you're worshiping with us. We give thanks, dear friends, for the gift of baptism, and we come before God to make public affirmation of our baptism in Christ. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself. Enlighten us with the gifts of your spirit and nourish us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up your people with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence now and forever. church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit they may proclaim forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and faithful stewards care for all God has made. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. 
for the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspire all people to use their strength wisely. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the sick and for those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lowly and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer and are in need, especially those we name before you now. For Jean, Paul, Elaine, Denise, Charlie, George, Irene, Dave, Jim, Joe, Donna, Norma, Ginny, Marge, Adam, Kathy, Melissa, Isla, Peter, Ida, Russ, Bill, Dennis, Janice, Andrew, Brett, Diane, Paula, Kenny, Shirley, Matthew, Kathy, Vanessa, Paula, Robert, Linda, Karen, Frank, Tracy, Adam, Allison, Ed, Dave, Alessio, Richard, Megan, Elsie, Kathy, Gabby, and Ben, Kathy, Evelyn, Gisela, Ed, Leslie, Sirena, Judy, Dolores, Candy, Damian, Marianne, Joseph, David, Dorothy, Dorothy, John, Tom, Kang, Corinne, Maisie, Dennis, Barbara, Justin, Stan, Sean, Lila, Skipper, Ronald, Kathy, Tess, Les, Rick, Gail, Sue, and Chuck, Amy, Ann, John, Nicholas, Chris, Aaron, Sarah, Chris, Eileen, Joanne, Barbara, Ruth, Melissa, Christy, Scott, Dan, Cheryl, Vicki, Grace, the grieving family and friends of Ed Lincoln, the grieving family and friends of Linda Lieberman, and the grieving family of Maria. For our service men and women at home and overseas and their families. That God shower compassion, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the congregation gathered here, for students returning to school this week, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, especially Ed, Linda, Georgi, and Svoboda, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations, let us pray, have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Share a sign of God's peace with each other and with your fellow worshipers. We worship God with the sharing of our gifts and our offerings. We give our offerings in praise and thanksgiving for all that God has done for us in Jesus Christ. And for the sake of Jesus' ongoing ministry and mission in this world, we use those gifts to carry out that mission. The mission that we've been entrusted to to share the good news of Jesus Christ in word and deed. Please take a minute of your time to make an electronic gift through the St. Paul's website, www.stpauls-edison.org. Follow the links for online giving. When you're making your online gift, please consider making that gift a recurring gift so that month after month your generosity might continue to, go, uh, to grow. Uh, and be part of the mission uh, that God is carrying out through this congregation. Also, since we are at the start of a new year, we ask that you prayerfully consider the amount that you give each week or each month and look for ways that you could increase those gifts and help us respond to the changing needs and respond to the challenges that are before us in 2021 so that we might continue to carry out that mission of sharing the good news of Jesus and all that this congregation says and does in this community and around the world. If you wish, you may mail your offering to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, 445 Old Post Road, Edison, New Jersey, 
0-8817, or make your gift online or in person when you are here. Now let us pray. Merciful God, in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you embrace our lives with your great love for humanity. With joy and gladness, we ask that these gifts may be for many a sign of that love, and that we may continue to share in your divine life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, light of the universe, teacher of truth, giver of goodness, we hear your word in the scriptures, proclaiming to us your wisdom and inviting us to follow your call. For speaking this word, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. Your word came among us in Jesus, our brother, who preached your righteousness, healed the sick, and revived the brokenhearted. For giving us this word, we worship you, O God. We worship you, O God. By your Spirit, bless all who receive this word, that upheld by the mystery of the body of Christ, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son, for sustaining us with your word. We praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Blessed are you, O holy God, around us, with us, and in us, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Some announcements as we begin our week together. Uh, first of all, the church council will meet uh, tomorrow evening on Zoom at 7 o'clock. Our main business will be the 2021 budget, finalizing that. Speaking of the 2021 budget, we are hosting, or the church council is hosting, three budget presentation meetings to talk about how we finished uh, 2020 uh, financially and what we're looking forward to in 2021. Uh, we're offering three of those Zoom meetings on Sundays at 1 p.m., starting next Sunday, January 17th, and then the January 24th and January 31st. Uh, there are a number of challenges before us, so please consider uh, carefully how you might grow your giving to help us respond to those challenges. The Zoom login information, the meeting ID, the passcode, and even a phone-in number are included with your order of service today and also uh, in the virtual bulletin. We offer uh, two Bible studies each week, a great way to, uh, to look uh, even deeper and to discuss with friends uh, in, in fellowship what God is saying to us in the scripture readings assigned for each week. We encourage you to be part of one of these, either Wednesdays at 1 o'clock or Thursday evening at 7 o'clock. Uh, the links to sign up for those Bible studies can be found uh, in your order of service uh, or on your virtual bulletin each week. If you don't receive our virtual bulletin, church newsletter, or other communications, if you're not on our email list, I encourage you or someone you know uh, to go to the St. Paul's website, go there today, uh, scroll down to the bottom, and sign up to make sure you receive those newsletters uh, and virtual bulletins mailed to you each week, especially over these next few weeks. That'll be uh, important. We'll have fewer in-person gatherings responding to growing infection rates and the fact that it is cold outside and the weather is unpredictable. Speaking of the cold, dark days of winter, we encourage you to stay connected during this time. Uh, you, of course, can always call or contact me, but also reach out to each other, uh, to friends of yours from St. Paul, and even consider using your church directory to reach out to those names and faces that may be unfamiliar to you. You can do so by giving a call, sending a card, an email, uh, whatever it might be, and it could be simply a matter of introducing yourself, asking how somebody is doing, and then asking just this simple question, how can I pray for you this week? 
take some time in that conversation to share those uh, prayer requests uh, with each other uh, and stay connected uh, during this time. Uh, thank you uh, for your presence here today. Thank you for uh, the way in which you continue uh, to gather, to support, to love and care for each other, uh, and to reach out to this world with the gospel. Invite your friends and family, no matter where they are, to join you in worship uh, here at St. Paul's, uh, online, in your homes, uh, connected wherever you are today uh, by being part of this congregation. And now, receive God's blessing. God the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is, Oh, Praise the Gracious Powers, in number 650.
times those beautiful words of the gospel are especially difficult to sing. Uh, <laughs> thank you for bearing with us. But take those words from this closing hymn to heart uh, as a way to guide us into this new year and to guide us forward into what God is calling us to do and realize that sometimes it's not always easy to sing that new song of the gospel. Now go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.